In our previous episode, we detailed the aftermath of the Lord Ruler's demise, the earliest stages of the Siege of Luthadel, and the deposition of King Elend. Chaos was to engulf Luthadel once more, as it was bereft of leadership and surrounded by enemies on all sides. Yet into the fray would once more step Elend Venture, assuming the mantle of a true leader, even if all seemed too late. The fight continued, and through the unceasing effort of Kelsia's former crew, in conjunction with Elend, it would be fought to whatever end. Elend was disheartened, but he refused to give in and accept the situation he now found himself in. Tindwill, at this point, had already begun tutoring the young man, and her initial efforts focused on improving his presentation. A new uniform tailored for him, a military form of garb in gleaming white, and a new haircut made him look less scholarly and more regal. Her further teaching was centered around improving his directness and degree of authority among his comrades and subjects. However, Tindwill's patience finally vanished upon the deposition of King Elland based on a bylaw he had himself inserted. Initially, the Keeper chastised the deposed king before insisting that he had to seize the throne of the central dominance by utilizing force ignoring the assembly's will. Elend refused, and insisted that it would be through lawful means if he were to reclaim his position as king. Tindwill, irritated by this decision, continued stating that now was not the moment for a legal battle, but Elend refused to listen to her. Questioning his naivety, the Keeper asked what the former king would do if his attempts to be recrowned diplomatically were to fail. He said he would continue to help the kingdom in whatever way he could. Despite her fury, Tindwill helped to prepare the speech Elend was to give at the assembly, the crux of which related to his connection to Kelsia's crew through Vin. As the assembly began, Elend nominated a former noble, Fersen Penrod, to preside over the meetings in the absence of a king of the central dominance. The nominations for the successor to the role of king were announced. Penrod had been nominated by a Scar worker, but he then nominated Elend in return for his appointment as Chancellor, and at the last moment, a former merchant, Philen Frenju, proposed the candidacy of Ashweather Ket. The latter had been hiding among the crowd, and unbeknownst to Kelsia's former crew, preoccupied with the events in the assembly, had taken up residence in Keep Hasting with a thousand soldiers. A week would pass with Elend parlaying with Ket regarding the stalemate although this ultimately proved unsuccessful. The fate of Luthadel hung in the balance until the day of the election. In a last-ditch attempt to sway the Scar workers of the city, Elend announced his conversion to the Church of the Survivor, hoping this would cause a deadlock in the vote, allowing him to maintain his position. However, another player was about to enter the fray. The bastard son of Straff Venture, Zane, who was ordered to kill Vin, and was obsessed with her. In an attempt to show her that she did not belong in Elend's world, he sent half a dozen of Straff's Alamancers to attack Elend and Vin during the election. Vin was forced to kill them, which reminded her that she could be a brutal and efficient killer, and made her question if she was worthy of Elend yet again. Following Vin's successful defense of the assembly, the election occurred in Penrod's mansion. Penrod received 15 votes, Ket 2 and Elend 7, which caused a deadlock, ensuring that Elend would retain his position. However, his honor was to be his undoing once more. When the assembly members asked if they could change their votes, Elend felt obligated to let them know it was possible. The individuals who voted for Ket changed their vote for Penrod, breaking the deadlock and making him the second ever king of the central dominance. Unbeknownst to Elend, Straff had bribed the merchant members of the assembly to vote for Penrod, with the promise of new titles, and convinced Penrod to ally with him against Ket. The only thing which stopped Straff from immediately invading Luthadel was the threat posed by a misborn as potent as Vin. In the aftermath of this crushing defeat and rejection by his people, Elend continued working tirelessly to ensure that the citizens of the besieged city would not die due to the plummeting temperatures, and also to figure out who may be poisoning the water supply of Luthadel. In one of his more reckless actions, however, 
Eland entered the camp of Justice Lecal to attempt to persuade his old friend not to attack the city with his coloss. Unwittingly, this further played on Vin's inherent insecurity, with Zane undermining his fellow Mistborn to such an extent that she believed she could not even protect the man she loved. Using that, Zane convinced Vin to assault Kert in Keep Hasting with his aid. The attack was brutal in its ferocity, as the two Mistborn were able to wipe out a third of the garrison in a matter of moments. The pair then made their way to the inner chamber, where Lord Ket and his son, Neondin, hid before threatening them. Although she initially believed that one or both of the Kets were Mistborn, this theory was quickly disproven, causing Vin to intervene when Zane attempted to murder the pair in cold blood. Still, following such an efficient decimation of his forces, Ket withdrew from the siege, realizing he was outmatched. Vin, for her part, fearing she had turned into a shade of what Kelsia once was with his inherent need to justify wholesale slaughter, hid in an abandoned thieves' hideout. While the attack on Keep Hasting was taking place, the negotiation between Elend and Jastis had failed, with the former king learning that Jastis barely controlled his coloss by paying them in worthless coinage. Afterwards, Elend, with the Kandra Orisur in tow, went to meet with Vin, who finally told her beloved that she was concerned about her propensity for violence in dire situations. During this conversation, Vin realized that she must leave the city to seek out the Well of Ascension. In the meantime, Sazed and Tindwil used their copper mines, older texts, and the rubbing of Quan's inscription to study the deepness based on Sazed's belief that it had returned with the death of the Lord Ruler, triggering the catastrophic event. During this period, the two became particularly close, with Tindwil acknowledging her feelings for her fellow terrorismen and the ever-cautious Sazid, eventually asking her to remain by his side in the city. Their study of the rubbing brought to light many inconsistencies, chief among them the motivations of Quan for sending Reshek to kill Elendi during the quest to defeat the Deepness. Why would a man of wisdom send someone disreputable like Reshek? And why did he fear that someone as honorable as the Hero of Ages would take power rather than give it up? Without further information about Quan or Ruin's ability to alter all but that which was engraved upon metal, the pair remained unable to decipher the true meaning of the rubbing. Still, both of them were aware that something was inherently wrong. The situation in Luthadel continued to worsen when Vin was confronted again by the smitten Zane. He initially attempted to convince her to leave the city behind and run away with him. However, her love for Elend and duty to Luthadel caused her to refuse. This enraged Zane, who attacked his fellow Mistborn. During the fight, he openly told her how he had attempted to manipulate her throughout the siege. A further revelation was made that the Kandra Orisur, who had befriended her during this period, was in fact another Kandra named Tensun, who was contracted to Zane. Tensun had slain Orisur and taken his place, however he had become immensely fond of Vin and now considered her a friend. The fight once more seemed hopeless for Vin, as Zane burned Atium, and her attempts to draw from the mist proved to be in vain, as she remained unaware that her earring continues to act as a hemorrhagic spike. However, it was to be Tensun's fondness for her which was to prove fortuitous in the fight, as he subtly showed her that a Kandra could be controlled by a Mistborn using a Durilumin enhanced soothing. She then commanded the Kandra to attack Zane, but that wasn't enough and Vin was wounded. Now cornered and without Atium, she had to use her wits and inherent talent as a Mistborn to beat her counterpart. She turned the foresight granted to Zane by Atium and his madness against him, stabbing Ellen's half-brother in the neck and killing him. She was forced to listen to Tensoon's confession in her injured state. Breaking a contract was a great shame, and the Kandra were supposed to be utterly loyal to the holder of their contracts. As such, Tensoon left the city to return to the Kandra homeland to be tried for his crimes. Meanwhile, Vin made her way to Elend who immediately insisted that Sazed heal her. Although she consented to his request, it would be upon one condition. Elend accepts her marriage proposal. The couple were wed in fittingly unconventional ways, with Sazed acting as the officiant. 
Soon after, the pair left the city with Spook, as Finn remained confident that she must now find the Well of Ascension and give up her power, as Elendi was allegedly supposed to in the time before Reshek's ascension. To get them as far from the city as possible before the Coloss were unleashed upon Luthadel, Sazed falsely informed them that the well was in Deritatith, a mountain high in the Terrace Dominance. However, a group followed the trio, foremost among them Justice Lekal. Elend, angered beyond all belief by the reckless acts of his friend in bringing a Coloss army to the gates of the world's largest city and leaving them bereft of any form of leadership, had Justice executed. Having witnessed the execution, the timid spook revealed Sazed's deception. An immediate realization then occurred to Vin that the Lord Ruler had moved the well to Credic Shore when he remade the world to ensure he would be in control once the well was refilled. In a desperate dash back to the city, Vin utilized Pewter before pulling and pushing horseshoes to get her back to Luthadel. The situation back in the city on the eve of the Battle of Luthadel was desperate. Straff Venture, making use of the advice of his now deceased bastard son, decided to hold back his army until the Coloss had effectively ravaged the city, leaving it easy pickings for his 50,000 strong contingent. In the absence of Vin and Elend, the desperate defense of the city fell to Doxon, who was forced to place a paltry thousand soldiers at each of the gates. Aware that they would not hold long in the face of the ferocious onslaught of a Coloss charge, contingencies to retreat to the keeps of the nobility were further put in place. Sazed and Tindwil also joined the defenders. The battle began with club scouts raising the alarm as Coloss started to work themselves into a bloody frenzy. The Tin Gate, to which Tindwil was granted command, was the first to face the onslaught with the Pewter and Zinc gates coming under immense pressure soon after. While the defences held firm, particularly that of the Steel Gate, with Sazed fighting fiercely there, it was not long before the unending tides of Coloss proved too great for the defenders. The Zinc Gate was to fall first, followed by the Tin Gate, as Tinduil was cut down while attempting to lead her men back to keep Venture, a decision that was followed by many of the commanders of the other gates. The retreat was a desperate affair, with casualties mounting, clubs and Doxon among them. The former died saving Breeze from a Coloss blade, while Doxon was brought low by the overwhelming might of the enormous blue warriors as his strength began to fade. By the time the sun set, Keep Lekal and Keep Venture had been stormed by the Coloss. As a result, only Keep Hasting stood firm with thousands of soldiers gathered to protect King Penrod from the Blue Tide. Half exhausted from her travels, Vin arrived at dusk, and although her arrival was a welcome boost to the defenders, it did not turn the tide immediately. Initially, all the Mistborn could do was cover the soldiers' retreat as they made their way from the faltering battle lines, yet despite the success, Vin knew she could not maintain such an effort indefinitely. At that point in the battle, only 5,000 men remained to face down the bloodthirsty 12,000 Coloss. As the struggle became increasingly desperate, Vin's thoughts turned to the knowledge she got from Tensoon, and she discovered that a sufficiently strong Mistborn could control the Coloss through a combination of brutal decimation of their strongest warriors and the burning of brass. Fortunately for the city's defenders, Vin represented one of the greatest Mistborn of her age, and the remaining Coloss were soon brought to heel. However, the battle was not yet won, as Straff Venture and his 50,000 remained outside the city, poised to take the former capital of the final empire. However, as the sun rose upon a battered city, Straff Venture gazed not upon a broken people, but a force of 12,000 Coloss upon the plain to the west of the city. The earth shook once more as the Coloss charged, Yet Straff's end came long before the two lines met. Vin utilized Duralumin once more, in conjunction with Steel on this occasion, to make one mighty leap across the battlefield. With an immense Coloss blade in her hand, she proceeded to cut down the head of House Venture, and the city was saved. Soon after, Ashweather Ket arrived with his 40,000 soldiers to support the city. Vin, now ascendant in her power, forced Penrod, Ket, and Straff's second, Janal, to submit to the new empire, 
with the absent Elend declared its first emperor. Upon his arrival, Elend was informed of his new position. However, there were more pressing issues at hand, so the newly married couple quickly made their way to Credic Shore, where they discovered the refilled well hidden within the storage cache. Sazed had at this point discovered the broken body of Tindwil and had lost all faith in his religions, which caused him to return to his studies of the rubbings. However, before he could intervene in Vin's unwittingly destructive endeavours, with the realisation that the rubbings had been altered, the Terrace Keeper was attacked by Marsh, and survived only with the intervention of Ham, who had recovered from the battle with the aid of Vin's remaining pewter. Inside the well, what remained of preservation appeared to the couple as a mist spirit. Preservation attempted to vainly dissuade them from their current course of action. Aware that Vin, like Elendi before her, was so pure of heart that she would give up ultimate power to save Scadriel, unaware of Ruin's interference with the prophecies. When this initial attempt proved futile, Preservation mortally wounded Elend by stabbing him, hoping Vin would take up the power to save him. However, Vin believed that even as he lay there dying, Elend would only want what was best for his people, and as such she gave up the power and felt a great dread as Ruin was now freed from his prison. Preservation, although he now despaired at the release of his great nemesis and the imminent destruction of his prized creation, ensured Vin she would not be left alone in the struggle to come. A mist wraith led the heartbroken Vin to what remained of the well and convinced her to give a Larassian bead to her dying husband. This turned him into a mistborn and, through the burning of pewter, saved the life of the Emperor. Ruin had returned to the world and with him came the full brunt of the deepness, effectively ensuring the coming of an apocalypse of proportions not witnessed since Elendi first took up the mantle of the Hero of Ages. However, this is the tale of our next video in this series. The following few videos in this series will be dedicated to the dying days of the first era of the Mistborn series, but we're planning to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes, so make sure you have subscribed and press the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely and don't forget to comment. We'll try to read and respond to every comment as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel and we'll catch you on the next one.